Marie Bartholdi joined by Brian David Marshall here to go through Yuki Matsumoto's draft. And Rich said it. I mean, that's an insane win percentage, 76%. So 76 to give me a little perspective on this. Like, how does that sh stack up against someone like... Marcio Carvalho, like who was a draft master uh, a couple years ago. Sure. So Marcio Carvalho, just for some context, is 68 percent. I've got Luis Scott Vargas at 64 percent, and Paulo Vito Damadoraza at 61 percent. So yeah. it's really good. But it, but it also is a pretty small sample size compared Correct. to those guys. Yes. Still has a lot to prove on the pro tour. Yes. And as Rich said, probably has to bump up his constructed game. But it's going to start here in this. Draft, All right. Let's right? take a look at his draft. <laughs> So we uh, know that he was sitting three seats to Yuki's, uh, Brad was sitting three seats to Yuki's right passing to him. So if you want a little bit of look there, let's take a look at what he opens here in his first pack, taking a look through here. Uh, what do you see, BDM, that you like? I, I love uh, the aggressive decks in this format. I like Merfolk, I like uh, Vampires. I also really like uh, Pirates and whatever flavor I can get them. Uh, the Stormfleet Aerialist jumps out at me. Uh, the River's Herald Boon. I would probably just take that, but I, you know, I kind of force Merfolk a lot. And you can't really afford to force something at this table. You do need to wait and see what people are going to do. Looks like he's got the Stormfleet Aerialist uh, towards the front of the pack, and that's what he takes. All right, Stormfleet Aerialist, a very kind of aggressive first pick. A lot of people really like this card. Uh, it's an early drop. It comes down usually as a 2-3 flyer, just yeah. uh, nice in a lot of decks. You could even play it in Merfolk if you wanted to. I, uh, absolutely, and I have... Uh, Pirates Cutlass is a card <laughs> that has done nothing but go up in people's Absolutely. pick orders. Absolutely. This is a card that was kind of disregarded just as an early, early on in the format. But, you know, you see, even if you play that Stormfleet Aerialist as a 1 2 and you take a Pirates Cutlass, you play that on turn three, it automatically equips to your Pirate. Suddenly you have a 3-3 flyer. Yeah, that card has just been an all star for me. Absolutely. Something of note here is Shape is of Nature, wow. too. I'm. I am really feeling good about for, first picking that Rivers Herald boot in this pack. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yuki here going to pick up that Pirate's Cutlass, though, and you'll see kind of the way that he's arranging these packs, too. He's kind of counting out to kind of assume what is going to come back to him, which is kind of interesting. Let's take a look here in the third pack for Yuki. There's an unfriendly fire there poking out near the back. That's kind of what's standing out to me. Nigzali's uh, keeper in the pack as well. A good early drop of Vampire Zeal. What do you think, BDM? I mean, looking at Pirates is Ruthless Ooh. Knave and uh, Desperate Castaways. Pious Interdiction, uh, also a, a premium card and a good signal that maybe, you know, White could be open for him. And he's got that shuffled up towards the front. He's also looking at those two uh, Black Pirates. He also has the Vampire Zeal shuffled up, but he does take the Interdiction. And that's, you know, a solid signal. You know, if you're getting that card third pick, that, that maybe that color is going to be open. You know, a lot of our signals in this format are tribal, but sometimes they're color signals, too. All right, let's take a look here. Another pious interdiction. Well, if it's good enough for pick three, what about what, pick four? What about Fiery Cannonade, though? You already have <laughs> uh, some pirate tools in your deck. Uh, he also has the, he has the Sky March Bloodletter uh, shuffled forward. Just a, a great creature. Even if you're not vampires, right? I think, you know, you'll see, uh, talking to pros, they said... The, the potted drafts that you see at the Grand Prix and the Pro Tour, the decks are a lot less tribal than sure. you might see in a league where you don't think you're going to play anyone at your table. You know, you're, everyone can just sort of stay in their lane. All right, there's a uh, Herald of Secret Streams in this pack here, potentially. Uh, Jade Guardian still left in here. BDM, your, your My Murph deck is, is coming insane. together. <laughs> 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 but if he wants to kind of hedge and... Uh, yeah, there he's going to take the herald. Yeah, he's going to take. You know, it's it's on color. It has. You know, it. You know, may or may not uh, pay off from. He may be even thinking that the merfolk are going to keep coming around. You know, a lot of times if no one jumps in to that pool early, those cards will make their way around the table. How early are you looking at a card as a definite signal in this format? Uh, I I think my third and fourth picks are really telling me a lot. Like I would put, I would invest a lot in that pious interdiction. Right, uh, Headstrong Brute, a, a very powerful card for a pirate strategy. Sheltering Light, and not a lot in white for him here to follow up with that pirate's introduction. He's just going to take the pirate. I, I also like the Stormfleet Pyromancer quite a bit, but I mean, he, he seems like he's really prioritizing the lower end of his curve. And uh, Headstrong Brute is just a difficult creature to deal with. And then if you end up with any of the auras that are available in your sort of Grixis assortment, that card becomes nigh impossible to deal with as a 5 5 menace. All right, there is a Windstrider he has pulled to the front here. Just a fine 3-3 three, three flyer. Flash. Yeah, like he, keeps, 
keeps looking at the uh, cheap black creatures. You know, he definitely has an eye on them, skittering heart stopper and things like that. You know, he's also, again, because this is not like where you make draft in a league, you're taking careful note of what cards might be ending up in other people's decks. So there's a prying blade. A blight keeper, that, speaking of cheap kind of black creatures. I'm trying yeah. to see if there's still a merfolk delver in that pack. I couldn't tell. Yep, oh, sure yeah. enough. Jungle delver. Jungle delver, excuse me. Yeah, that's I mean, a card that people like in Merfolk quite a lot. Yeah, you were correct. Lowercase, lowercase, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, taking a look here as we kind of round out the first pack, there's I, another Blight Keeper in there. Where's Christian Calcano when you yeah. need him? <laughs> well, but, yeah, uh, Yuki does take the Blight Keeper. I, I like Storm Sculptor a lot. You know, yeah. you know you, we have cards like that Stormfleet Aerialist. Like sometimes you play that on turn two to get something down, to be able to trigger raid, and then later in the game, you get to bounce that or something like that with the uh, Sculptor and then uh, replay it with Raid on another turn. Speaking of those cheap auras that you were talking about coming down on those pirates. Swashbuckling? Swashbuckling right there is uh. the pickup. Looks pretty good on a Headstrong Brute <laughs> or a two-drop. Yeah, <laughs> it looks great Great on a Stormfleet Aerialist. Suncrown Hunters uh, could be a pickup. Might not end up making the deck for him there, but he's going to take it. Yeah, just like some kind of like top-end creature. So, so right now, you know, looking to be... There's a sure Ooh, strike. Ooh, sure strike. That's a good pickup. That's a great pickup for him here. Also, again, you know, if he ends up with a couple more headstrong brutes, you know, again, it's a, 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 if you have another pirate on the board, it's a, it has menace. So, you know, you force people into making blocking decisions they don't really want to make. They're like, oh, I really need to block here. And then you have a card like sure strike and you get your... You're two for one. You know what I found in this format? A headstrong brute, uh, just having menace, any creature with menace seems to be pretty good. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, dire Fleet Interlopers overperformed for me. Uh, the headstrong brute has been has been terrific. Let's take a look at, at what he's got here. All right, so we've got a couple of Blight Keepers that he's picked up as well. And as we noted, that swashbuckling, that Pirate's Cut list looking pretty good. Do you think he's looking to be Grixis Pirates at this point? I, I think he is keeping his options open. And I think he's going to end up in... One, he's going to either be blue, black, or blue, red, and he's going to wait and see where this second pack goes, see what, uh, I think, leaning towards blue, black, the way he's got it sorted here. Pirates, of course, a tribe that will allow itself to splash a little more easily than oh, any of the other tribes because of treasure. Oh, I've seen, I've seen some crazy splashes in, in a pirate deck. You know, you get a couple of prosperous pirates and... And that's all you need to yeah. splash. <laughs> to splash anything. Well, I'll just splash Settle the Wreckage. Why not? <laughs> I had I'll a splash coming. Burning Sun's Avatar played against me once. Ugh, Didn't see that coming. That's ambitious. <laughs> it was. So how are you feeling if you're if you're Yuki right now? I think he's got some solid cards. He doesn't have anything that's, uh, you know, a huge bomb. Uh, but, again, this format, not necessarily about huge bombs. I mean, they're great. You know, it's great when you get the, the crazy vampire deck and the Sanctum Seeker, and you're just like, oh, I just have to attack and I win. Yeah, that's and, my dream. <laughs> yeah, mine too. <laughs> uh, but, you know, th this is, uh, he, he, you know, he looks like he's pretty happy to just draft a, a deck that's going to be, you know, on curve and, and just do the best, you know, the best thing possible on each turn. All right, let's take a look here so at what he's going to pull in pack two. Cutless. Yeah, Pirate's Cutlass number two, I mean... Sounds fine to me. Oh, oh. How about this BDM? It's a River's Rebuke. So let me, I said he doesn't have any bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rephrase. That is no longer going to be true uh, after this pick. Um, you know, we talk a lot about synergy in this format and, you know, all these cards that get better and a lot of the rares, right? Like we talked, we just mentioned Sanctum Seeker. Not a bomb if you're not in a very right. specific deck. River's Rebuke, all it requires is islands. And that card is just absolutely a bomb. One of the most powerful cards. High correlation for me winning a trophy on Magic Online River's and Rebuke. drafting a River's Rebuke. Absolutely. Just send somebody right back into the Stone Age <laughs> if you play it on them. Let me tell you. All right, let's see what he has here. Well, here's Ooh. another uh, card that could be quite the bomb. Uh, Dire Fleet Dire Ravager. Ravager. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, if you're doing something really aggressive uh, at the top end of your curve, having a card like that, you know, take a, away a, a big chunk of, I mean, your life as well as your opponent's. Yep. But... You don't hopefully care too much about your life. You know, you're, you, you, you'll play it, and then you know, yeah, you're just going to try to finish them off in, like, one attack there. Yeah, Dire Fleet Ravager, also uh, Death Touch, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> if you need something else there. He is going to take the Dire Fleet Ravager. Swashbuckling and, still as well. And, and a couple of, like, cheap black pirates that might come back around the table to him, like that Dire Fleet Hoarder, you know, is, a, is potentially something that could make it back. This deck's turning out to be pretty sweet so far, BDM. So there's a Ruin Raider for him. Ooh, a Ruin Raider, that's nice. So 
you know, he's, he's really getting, you know, he had really kind of like meh cards in pick right. one. They were fine, right? But like has gotten some really he's uh, getting the hookup powerful, now. powerful spells here in pack two. I mean, Ruin Raider, is that a card where you can safely assume that nobody's in black? Uh, it's, it seems it seems pretty, pretty <laughs> seems pretty it seems like pretty clear that to his left is uh, is, is wide open in that color and uh, he's going to make the most of it. This is the only pack <laughs> that will pay off for him. <laughs> Turns around next pack. And there you get a look at him. 76. 70, Mr. 76%. Is that Dead Eye Tormentor, uh, a really nice card for the uh, for the pirate stack, you know, something you, know, you get raid, you get to make your opponent discard a card, can be awfully frustrating. You've, you, you'll see people playing around this card a lot. You know, really trying to like hold back a land. They don't want to get uh, punked for their last card oh, in hand. Happened to me at a PPTQ <laughs> this past weekend. <laughs> Goodbye, my Burning Suns avatar. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I was like, all right, I got the yeah, win right. next turn. Just kidding. You're kind of like rocking a hard place there though, because you got to keep <laughs> playing your lands if you yeah. ever want to cast yeah. that. <laughs> All right, Desperate Castaways can be pretty good in a pirate deck there. There's a Dire Fleet Interloper. There's a Prosperous Pirates, a card we talked about earlier. Wow, Tempest Caller. Tempest Caller. Do you play that in a pirate's deck? You know what? I do. I, I, I'll play that in any deck that's blue. I mean, he already has the River's Rebuke, but you know what? That card is just uh, really... He's got the Desperate Castaways there. Oh, just like he wants to get himself set up, have a good curve. And again, that's a great card with a Pirate's Cutlass. Oh, yeah. Uh, you play that on turn two. Attack for four on turn three with it with a Pirate's Cutlass. Just devastating. Windstrider here. We have a Sailor of Means as well, which is a nice way to set yourself up with the treasure. But what, what I was going to say about the just Tempest Caller and a Pirate's yeah. is a lot of times you'll have a Siren's Ruse. Sure. And so that's a card you can like play early or play on curve and then later in the game just reset it with, a, with that and tap your opponent down. I'm liking this deck so far. I am really liking this deck. And you also, you know, see a lot of uh, synergy with his Cutlass in this deck. There's a run aground in this pack. You can have a There's dual land a if he wants. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he, he looks like he's uh, pretty solidly just not going to be splashing here, not as worried about uh, the mana fixing and just takes the run aground. And that's, you know, we've talked about the R decks, you know. Yep. He's seen a couple of Mark of the Vampires go around the table. And, you know, that's a card maybe you're thinking about and, you know, pretty pretty great answer to the Auras decks, our, our uh, Depths of Desire, Run Aground, Ground, Perilous Voyage, cards like that. Ooh, wow, one speaking of Auras. <laughs> There's my favorite BDM. <laughs> wow, one with the wind. Get in. That is pretty late it's here. pretty late. See a Wind Strider in the pack still. Cobbled Wind. Legion's Judgment. Yeah, all, all, you know, some pretty solid cards, white, blue. Not a supported pair. You <laughs> see a lot of white blue cards going. Have you ever drafted white blue yet? I, I have. I haven't had any success with it. Uh, maybe if I had a river's rebuke. <laughs> there's another run aground in there, and there's a siren's ruse that you mentioned. It looks like he took the prying blade there. Okay. I'm a little surprised he didn't even look at the siren's ruse. But uh, I don't have a 76 win percentage. <laughs> <laughs> on the front door, so I will defer to him. So it looks like he's putting himself solidly in blue black pirates. Here yeah, blue, blue black pirates bucket. might have a couple cards uh, off tribe here and there, but again, it has that you know, if the game gets oh, goes, dive down, yeah, dive down is a great card, especially with that one with the wind in his, in his deck. I, I might sound really excited about dive down, I and that's that's down. accurate. That yeah. card is once you know, we talked about pirates, pirates cut list kind of going up in estimation. Dive down is another one that I just love. I absolutely love Dive Down. You know, it's great to be able to protect your aura up creature. Um, a lot of times, you know, the, you know, this is very much a racing format and, you know, you're going back and forth and someone's just sitting on their removal spell. They're like, okay, I want them to commit to like this entire, you know, this big attack. Right. And you're like, Haha, I'm going to remove it. And then you're like, sorry, oh, I've nope. got the Dive Down. Dive Down. And if also, somebody's holding their removal in their hand and then you just uh, are able to answer it with a really cheap Dive Down, it's pretty good. So yeah, it's really uh, I really like uh, dive down also for its ability to eat territorial hammer skulls. Sure. You know your opponent's like, okay, well you've got a shapers of nature. I, all right, attack, uh, block. You know they're like tap down your creature. You're like no, it's I'm gonna counter that effect with dive down. I'm gonna block it and I've got extra toughness. So it's a neat, it's a really nice card. It's done a lot of hard work and a lot of different phases of the game. All right, so uh, you can see Yuki's here taking a look through some of his picks here for the first two packs. 
overall, what do you think about his deck so far? I, I'm, I'm really liking it. He got paid off really well in pack two. I mean, you know, he, he again, we talked about that idea that he was blue, red, black in pack one. He could have gone in a mul multiple different directions, opens the river's rebuke. He's like, fine, definitely going to be doing blue, and then gets a couple of black rares in... Uh, the Dire Fleet Ravager and the Ruin Raider and, uh, you know, can do a lot of damage to his own life total. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be something he's got to think about. <laughs> but uh, he also has the ability to really just uh, run his opponents over. And uh, and if the game goes late, that River's Rebuke is, is a blue fireball, right? He's just like, pick it all up, get it all in there. Uh, so I'm really liking this. I, interesting how much he's prioritizing these cheap creatures here. I know. That's what I was going to say. Do you think that that's where he's looking to kind of fill out his curve a little bit more if he's being this aggressive with these two Blight Keepers in here? Yeah, absolutely. And maybe, you know, maybe he's thinking that there'll be some auras. They, they carry a pi Pirate's Cutlass really well. Yeah, that's and, true. And, uh, you know, they trade. You know, the Skittering Heartstoppers will, will trade up, which is always nice. And maybe he's just looking to... Uh, get to uh, a place where he can deploy his big threats. So hoping for something like Mark of the Vampire, for instance, Possibly. to really swing a game I back. I think he'd really like another one with the wind. Oh, yeah. There's a Settle the Wreckage as the rare in this pack. Three and other Desperate Castaways if he's really looking to round out the early part of his curve here. I, I think he's going to go Shipwreck Looter here. All right. Uh, you know, this is just a great two drop. Uh, it's great on turn two, just as a body on the board, but also, you know, you play it on turn three after attacking for, you know, on turn two uh, with your two drop, I should say. You know, you just get to dig through your deck a little bit. You know, there's not a lot of things to do with extra mana in this format. So right. anything that lets you get a little bit of deck velocity is, is, is really exciting. And by the way, he can play that on turn two with Raid triggered a lot. Remember, we saw those three one drops. Absolutely. So uh, Shipwreck Looter, just a, a, a terrific card here. Uh, one I'm always happy to see. I've, I've definitely first picked it in this kind of Tribal Synergy deck. All right, let's take a look here. What he picks for pack two. Shaper's Apprentice. Another, Another dive, dive down. down. I like Water Trap. Oh, Ooh, walk the plank. Wow, walk the plank. That is just perfect for him. I guess maybe no one's black on the other side of him either because Best place to be. that's just a great uh, card here to get past. You know, we talk all the time about how inefficient the removal is in this format. You know, right. Five mana contract killings, five mana unfriendly fires, you know, usually killing creatures that cost less than the spell. Walk the plank, you know, only has one glaring hole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty big one sometimes. It's a pretty big one. <laughs> but <laughs> most of the time, no downside. Yeah, just takes down a dinosaur, takes down, takes down a pirate. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so premium removal, that's what he takes there. Fabulous inclusion for him there. Wow, Vanquish, Vanquish the Week, another really great removal spell. Ooh, Kite Sail Freebooter. Interesting, too. He's got Kite Sail Freebooter up above the removal spell. I mean, isn't it kind of a removal spell? It is a, it is a removal spell. You get to look at your opponent's hand, take a non-creature out of it, exile it for as long as the Kite Sail Freebooter's in play. That's what he's going to take. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think, something interesting for us to, to take away from this. You know, he's got Kite Sail Freebooter over Vanquish, Vanquish the, the week, week, which is one of the absolute top black commons. It's really great to be able to see these players at the top level of the game playing after they've played, who knows, hundreds of drafts Absolutely. of this format. And, and I, I, you're going to assume that he is spending a lot of time on Magic Online drafting for him to have the kind of record, record he has. Wow, there's a contract killing. You know, obviously, you know, we complained about it being expensive, but it still gets the job done. Sure does. Pretty much all the time. Is he going to take this light keeper over it? <laughs> That's going to be a very, <laughs> very interesting lesson for us to take away from this draft. <laughs> if he takes a light keeper again, he's. It's not like he doesn't already have light keeper. No, he has two. Wow. He's going to do it. <laughs> takes light keeper over contract killing. Wow. I mean, maybe it's just too slow. He's yeah. like, look, I'm going to get in fast. I'm getting in early. Contract killing costs five. Not interested. Wow. So there's a Dead Eye Tormentor. There's a Storm Sculptor card we talked about earlier. And maybe now that he has a Shipwreck Looter and a Dead Eye Tormentor and the Aerialist, he'll consider taking that. Yeah, it wears a Pirate's Cutlass is, uh, pretty well. Yeah. Too. There's a Dire Fleet Captain. I know. There. The Red Black Pirate's deck was also open. <laughs> I'm sure he's looking at it now like, oh, well. <laughs> he does take the Storm Sculptor there. So, you know, and that's, and that's you know, I think his, like, Little, just that's his finisher there, right? You know, he's just gonna get, I'm gonna just go to work with this guy. All right, here we've got a Siren's Ruse. There's a Depths of Desire. Secret, Secret Squire, Squire, another great two drop. Annoying a Deacon if you're in Vampires. Take a look, there Scout it is. Scout Tribal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is going to take the sneaker squire. You know, uh, another way to pick up that Tempest collar is that is that Storm Sculptor. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't end up with the Tempest collar though, right? That was that, that was not one of the cards that made it into his deck. Hasn't looked at a Siren's Ruse once. No, he hasn't. So Skittering Heartstopper, Prying, Prying Blade. Blade. Number two it would be. You know, not not looking at Opta. Opta's a card that's actually gone down considerably for me as we've done all these events and we've watched players draft and we've all drafted ourselves. Not a lot the, of people seem to be taking it. Yeah, it does take the Prying Blade, looking to make his one drops a little more formidable. So in this deck, are you playing the Pirate's Cutlass and your two Prying Blades? Uh, quite possibly. Oh, there's Depths of Desire. That's a great, uh, that's a nice that's a pick great up. pickup for him there. Looking at that late Raptor's Companion. Don't think he's seriously looking at Spreading Rot, but uh, maybe he's seen the New Horizons deck do too many broken things. <laughs> well, he's toying with... Okay. I mean, it's the sideboard card. Sometimes you need it if somebody's got, like, a, a hey, flip land. Maybe he's playing for the camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does take the Depths of Desire. Dark Mur... Oh, there is Desperate Castaways yeah. coming back to him. Deadeye Tormentor and Desperate Castaways and Dark, Dark nourishment. nourishment. Wow. Black was wide open here. But he is going to take the Tormentor. Tormentor. He's going to be able to pick away at his opponent's hand and develop his board and reset it with the Storm Sculptor. Dive There's down. Dive down super late. There's also a Duress. It's a card I've seen more and more people playing. There's also a Skittering Heart Stopper. Yeah, maybe he just doesn't have enough auras to make the dive down super worth it at this point. Sure. Rounding out the final picks, there's a Queen's Bay Soldier. <laughs> Third Prime Blade. I don't <laughs> think we'll see him play all three, but passes the Fleet Swallower. Yeah, that's yeah. a card I tried a couple of times, just <laughs> didn't pay off. Shorekeeper there as he kind of rounds out the draft. All right, if you're Yuki Matsumoto, BDM, how do you feel about this? I think I feel pretty good. I, I think that this is, a, this is a solid deck. He's got... Uh, He's got a good curve. He's got some good raid triggers. He's got some ability to reset some of those cards. He's got, you know, one of the premium cards in his in his tribe in the in the Pirates Cut list. And he's got a bomb in River's Rebuke to just end the game. I, I really like what he's done with this with this seat in this table. Have you taken away any lessons from watching him draft this deck? Uh, well, Blight Keeper over Contract Killing tells me everything. I want to know about his, certainly his opinion of the of this format in terms of the speed and you know he just doesn't have time for a five mana removal spell despite the fact that he didn't have a lot of removal or bounce at the time. All right, well that is Yuki Matsumoto's draft. We're going to get a chance to see this deck in action after we come back. We get ready to sit down for round one of draft here at Pro Tour Ixalan.